All right, Chris, we're going to get started here with a question from Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic. He'll be followed by Brendan Clean. Thanks, Palmer. Appreciate that. Uh, Chris, just, just a couple things. Um, one, just how has practice looked? You know, you guys are now, you know, as far as full, you know, can have in groups and things of that nature, doing four on four and five on five, Monty said yesterday. And then two, can you give us an insight on uh, on Nader? I mean, like, I mean, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I remember him playing against Phoenix in the bubble. Uh, he played well, but you obviously have a better idea of how, you know, what type of player he is. If you could just maybe give a breakdown of him and, and what he brings to the table. Yeah, uh, things going well. Uh, excited to have, you know, guys here together. We excited to hoop. Excited to finally get a chance to, uh, you know, do things you know, as a team and not, not necessarily as individuals. Uh, as far as uh, Dooley goes, uh, he's just a consummate team player. You know what I mean? He's going to do whatever coach asks him to do. Uh, if that's defending the best player, he's going to run hard, he's going to compete and um, can, can really shoot it. And just a consummate team guy. Next up is Brendan Clean with Bright Side of the Sun and he'll be followed by Kellen Olson. Hey, Chris, uh, a little bit of a, an off topic question, I guess, but um, just curious with you joining the Suns, obviously, when you think of point guards in Phoenix, you think of Steve Nash. He's a guy I know you had a chance to compete with for several years. So um, just curious what your relationship has been like with him, if, if there is one. And I guess just uh, what it means to, to kind of be, be on the same team that, that he made, um, made a heyday in. Uh, Steve's great. Steve's great. Um, uh, shoot, yeah, I'm excited to play against him now. He's a coach, you know what I mean? Coaching in Brooklyn. Um, you just never know where your career is going to take you. Uh, obviously, I remember playing against Steve uh, when he was here. Uh, I remember Grant Hill, Sean Marion, all them guys, man. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a lot of great history here uh, with this organization and you know, Stefan Marbury, you know, Jay Kidd, all these different guys. So it's a, it's a number of them. We have Kellen Olsen with Arizona Sports. He'll be followed by Paul Richardson. Hey, Chris, another one a little bit off topic from today. Uh, I was just curious, as we get to know you more in your time here in the Valley, you obviously have a really substantial role within the league as the president of the Players Association. Can you tell us a little bit about that role and then also – just the reasons why you wanted to step up and, and be the voice that you have for the league and the players specifically for the past couple of years? Um, yeah, my role, uh, I'm pretty involved in, in, in a lot of things that, that goes on. Um, just, you know, communicating with players as much as possible. Um, um, yeah, uh, I think the reason why I got involved starting back like my third year was just to sort of understand the business of the game, you know, and I've had an opportunity to be in a number of the negotiations and all this stuff. I've learned a lot, right? When you're a kid and you're growing up playing in your backyard, trying to be Michael Jordan, you're not thinking about CBA negotiations. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're just thinking about playing basketball. But as you get older, you realize that it's a business. You know, you take care of your family and everything like that. So uh, it's been an unbelievable learning process for me. And I just continue to soak in as much as I can. <clears throat> Next up is Paul Richardson with the Sports Cave. He'll be followed by Dwayne Rankin. Hey, Chris, thanks. Two quick ones as well. One, have has anyone surprised you yet that you're falling with now that maybe from playing them, you didn't know that they could do certain things that's coming out in practice? And then two, you said now Steve is a coach. Well, I know Jay Kidd is a coach. Is that a foreshadow for what you're going to do when you retire? And I don't know about all that. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean, I think one of the most interesting things is uh, that Willie Green is my assistant coach. You know what I mean? I was my backcourt mate in New Orleans and with the Clippers. And uh, he's one of the best, you know, guys I ever played with. And it's, it's dope to see him as a coach now. Um, and I don't know if it's one guy that surprised me. You know, I, I think I'm getting a chance to see uh, firsthand why they were so good in the bubble and the jump that they made from like the season to the bubble, you know, and I think that's what's been really cool to see Cam Johnson and to uh, know Javon Carter, you know, before I got here and uh, just to see how many hungry guys we got, you know, and I, 
talk about Etwan Moore and Langston Galloway a lot because I didn't play against them for years. But um, to see not only, like I know they can hoop, but to see what type of guys they are in the locker room already, I think it's going to be big for our team. Next is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic. He'll be followed by Christos Saltis. Yeah, Chris, I think you were asked the first the first time we talked with you just about you know the challenge of, of trying to play a season outside of the bubble with, with with the COVID, and then now we're seeing you know Portland you know have a COVID positive OKC, uh, you know it's just it seems like it's now you know that reality is starting to hit. Um, just being being the role that you have, what maybe message advice? You know, trying to give guys to 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 do the best they can because these things seem inevitable. But what 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 things you feel like can be handled or addressed uh, to 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 try to really combat the virus? You no, know, it's it's one of those things where we we we've been saying all along is safety first, right? Um, and uh, even when we were trying to figure out everything with the bubble, um, the thing that we kept saying that we're not in control. The virus is in control, so. Um, unfortunately, when these things happen or arise, we'll, we'll have to deal with them on a case by case basis and just continue to, to talk as players, talk as a league and always um, see what's best, you know, for for the league, for the players, for the players as a collective, but the league as a whole. Next up is Christo Saltis with Sport DNA in Greece. He'll be followed by Kellen Olson. Hello, Chris. I have uh, two questions. The first one is... Uh... What are impressed you most about your new team in the first couple of days of uh, team practices? What has impressed me most? Yes. Uh, I think um, sort of camaraderie that we sort of built already, you know, through team group text. Uh, and I don't know, like our team sort of, it seemed like we've been together for a while just because we, we, we got guys that want to compete, that want to work hard, but you can tell everyone enjoys being in the gym. You know, nobody, you know, I mean, we play basketball. We're blessed. We're very fortunate to be in the situation that we're in, obviously. Um, but it's one of those situations where you, obviously you should never feel like you're coming to work because we, we playing basketball, but you still, you just, you're excited to go to the gym to be around the guys. And um, if you're doing that, you know that you're off to a really good start. All right, final two questions will be from Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports and Cody Cunningham. Hey, Chris, you mentioned all those battles with Devin where you guys almost fought each other. So so through that, you obviously got a good feel for his his skills and what he does so well. The next step for him is obviously winning, and he'll just he'll say that a lot when you ask him what he's got to work on next. But for you, when you get your hands on a talent like that and, like a, and a 25-year-old guy who's got a lot to improve on still, despite how good he is already, what are you looking for out of him in the next couple of months? And and watching for him to improve on, despite what he's what he's accomplished already. Nothing. <laughs> I ain't looking for nothing. You know, <laughs> That's fair. It, it's nothing that I'm I'm gonna do alone. It's nothing that he's gonna do alone. I think um, his presence, his demeanor. Uh, one thing about Book is that he commands respect from everybody, from just how he plays the game and how he carries himself. So all the other stuff will take care of itself because he he puts the work in. All right, final question comes from Cody Cunningham with the Phoenix Suns. Hey, Chris, uh, kind of going off that question, uh, one thing that doesn't get highlighted a ton with Devin's game is his playmaking ability. Just how underrated is that part of his game, and how do you like that versatility that you two can bring? Man, um, Devin is a, is a, is a problem. <laughs> it's a problem because it's, it's a lot of guys that, you know, they are shooters or they just take you off the dribble or they athlete. He got all that. You know, he got all that. And to see the way the guys are developing uh, around him, whether it be uh, Mikael, whether it be Cam, all these different guys, um, we're just going to keep building. You know, we're going to keep building. And it's our job to, to make things easier on him. And the same thing for uh, DA. All 